So now after preparing our sample for dry edge run, we, we find the PC and we log into the JWNC website to submit the dry edge uh, and make a booking. Yeah. So now we log into the JWNC website, we go to the dry edge tab, then make booking from here. Then here we have the dry edge tools, so we select any tool that we would like to use. So in our case we will use the RIE80+, so we choose that one. Here we have the selection of gases and the selection of flow rates, so every gas we choose we will set a flow rate for that. Then we have the RF power, the pressure in millitors, the temperature of the chamber, and then we have the edge time. Then we have the preferred day, so we would like to, we can choose any day and then whether it's uh, in the morning or in the afternoon. Then we should give a second choice of the booking so that in case uh, there is no time slots, the technician can uh, book another time. And here we can choose the urgency, if it is highly urgent or normal or low. And here we have to select a sample. So these samples are usually stored in the database and we have to select one of them. And in this case we only have one sample, so we select that. So in our case, uh, we have uh, to choose CF4. And the flow rate for that will be five CCMs. Then we choose another gas, which is H uh, O2. So it is this one. And then the flow rate for that will be 95. The power will be 200 watts. And then the pressure will be 20. The etching time is usually, uh, we will keep it at uh, 10 minutes for, the, for now. As we are using the interferometer, we can stop any time before that. Then the mask material is the material on the top, which is usually uh, resist. And in our case, it is uh, S18 or 5. And then here, if we would like to use the interferometer, we should select this option here. And we can leave any notes uh, to the technicians if we like. And then we can press make booking here. So now, we have the booking number, D18495. And we can have a look at the booking details. So the tool used, which is RI80+, then we have the gases used, TF4 and O2, 5 and 95 SCCMs, the flow rates. Then we have the RF power, we have the pressure, we have the requested time, which is 10 minutes and 0 seconds. The temperature is 22. Then the preferred day is Friday AM. The second choice, we left it at uh, AM, although we should change it to some other time to give the operator a chance to schedule uh, the booking. The masking material is S1805, and we would like to use the interferometer, so it is yes here. And then the sample ID is given here, the material. And these are the booking details. Now if we would like to see whether the booking has been scheduled or not, we can just go to my recent bookings. So if we select that, we see that the previous bookings, the status is complete. Uh, this one is preliminary and it's not scheduled yet. So once the operator schedules our booking, we can see that in the booking date section, we can see that uh, the booking and time of the booking. And the operator's name will appear here as well. And in this case, we have the sample here. So we write uh, our name, the sample number, and the booking number uh, on the box. And then we take it to the drawer, and to the dry edge room. So this is the dry edge room where all the dry edge equipment are housed. OK. Yeah.
So this is the 80 plus dry edge tool where we will use the interferometer here to uh, focus the signal on the surface of our sample and we use the signal to monitor the etching process and this is the monitor that we will look at where we will get the output signal that is reflected from the surface of our sample and we use it to determine the time where we stop at the end of the dry etch run. So we will, uh, now we will load our sample and it is a 10 by 10 millimeter square sample. Uh, this is indium phosphide and we have polymide on the surface. So we will dry etch the polymide and using the interferometer signal we will determine the time where we stop at the surface of the sample and all the polymide will be removed. So the chamber is uh, usually kept under vacuum and now we are venting the chamber so that we can load our sample into the chamber and then we will pump it down again to vacuum before we, act we actually start the dry etch run. This is the glass opening that the laser beam will be focused through. And from here we can adjust the interferometer so that we can focus it on the area that we would like to monitor during the dry edge run. So we can adjust it in the X and Y uh, axis. Now the chamber will be opened so that we can load the sample into it. And uh, here is uh, Michael who will load the sample. We have to load the sample as close to the center of the truck as possible. So the sample is located in the center of the uh, chuck. This is important so that um, the interferometer can be directly above the, the sample. So now we will close the chamber. and we will start pumping down. <coughs> we have to enter the run number. So now the chamber is being pumped down until it reaches uh, vacuum. What is the pressure? Is it not shown here? We'll show you shortly. Okay. The okay. pressure now is coming down. And now the lower pressure range. When the sample is ready to be processed, it will display and um, its pressure range. We have 
to select a, a position for the interferometer? So this is the interferometer point, so it is focused here. And now uh, these are patterns that are featured on the, surf on the surf sample. So we would like to etch the area that is located between these features. And that's where we will focus our laser beam. So that whenever the... Uh, so now we will get a fluctuating signal. And whenever the whole polymide is removed, the signal will be reflected from the top of the indium phosphide substrate, and that's when the interferometer signal will become flat, so we can stop our dry H1. Are you happy with that position? Yes. So just uh, minimize the screen. We have to get ready to start our interferometer. So when we press go, it will start recording, but first of all, we have to check the process. Yes. Make sure the parameters are correct, and then we can run. So. so we will check the process now, the process parameters, so recipes, and then it's the CF4O2 gases. So we have five SCCMs of uh, CF4, and then uh, 95 SCCMs of uh, O2. And the pressure will be 20 millitons, and the power will be 200 watts. And we will set the run to initially run for 10 minutes, but whenever the uh, sig uh, interferometer signal becomes flat, then we stop the run, and should be about six minutes. So once the plasma starts, then you can uh, press go. Okay. So now we will start the, interfo the dry edge run. And first run. And now we started the interferometer so that we can trace the signal. And the DC bias. When you have a bias. So now we have a bias of uh, 532 volts. And you can see the plasma through the window here, just to make sure that it is actually striking. And this is the interferometer signal. So it will keep oscillating until uh, we reach the substrate, where it should, be, should become flat. And that's where we will stop our run. So here is the outline of the interferometer signal, and here we can see a zoomed-in version, so that we can just have a clear picture of what is happening. So it will keep going to the peak-to-peak -peak values, so from the bottom to the top, and then oscillates back again. And here is the time. So now it is at 60 seconds, which is one minute. So at around six minutes, we should have a flat trace. So these are the gases that are gases that are connected to the chamber, and we have a couple of gas sources that are active at the moment, which is CF4N2, with a flow rate of five SCCMs, and then the rest of the gases are switched off, and then we have the uh, O2 gas running at a flow rate of 95 SCCM, and that is constant throughout the run. 
And here the interferometer signal, it, it uh, varies depending on the material that is being etched. So for example here we are etching polymite and then it will reach the indium phosphide surface. But if we have like gallium arsenide or gallium nitride or silicon or any other material, then we will see a bit of a different signal. And here is the zoomed in version of the uh, big signal here. So now we are at 150 seconds, which is two and a half minutes. So we still have like around three minutes to go, or three and a half minutes to go. And we here we can see that we have a nice and uh, consistent uh, output signal as we are etching polymide only. So it is the same material. If we go into a different material, the signal should change. The interferometer beam has a, a wavelength of 695 nanometers and the power is less than one milliwatt and that is uh, being focused at the surface throughout this glass opening on the top of the chamber. And here we can monitor the sample while it is being etched and we can see the plasma is, is striking inside the chamber. So around six minutes, which is 360 seconds, the signal that is fluctuating at the moment should go flat. So it should, we should see here a flat line. So we know that we are reaching the indium phosphide substrate, which is not being etched. And that's why the signal will not fluctuate anymore, indicating that we have entered the new uh, material system. So we will stop the interferometer at the moment, at that moment, and we will stop the tri h run. Yes, that's good. Yes. Yeah. So now we saw that we we stopped the dry etch on. And here we can see the zoom in signal. So it, it uh, after the this peak it became flat. So now we have entered into the uh, indium phosphide substrate and the whole polymide is removed at around 6 minutes, which is 360 seconds. So we will vent the chamber at the, now and uh, unload our sample. So now we can save our trace. We, we right click on the trace here and then we uh, save it to BMP. I forgot when I get my phone back. Here. So this is sample number 10. And we just say B P A T plus bit map edge. We can later press continue and then force cut. So we can have the option to right click again and save data as CSV so that we can have the freedom to plot it in any software that we can use. And then we go again to users and uh, we save the file in the uh, CSV format. And we can choose whatever name we would like to. So BP, AT plus uh, polymide 
and you can save it here. Now we are waiting for the for the uh, chamber to go to atmospheric pressure, and when it reaches that point, uh, the technician will remove will will open the lid and uh, remove the sample. Uh, we wait for the timer here to go to zero seconds, and at that point, we can uh, open the chamber and unload the sample. We will also tell you that the painting is finished. So now it is sitting at venting status, and once it is uh, fi finished, then it will uh, tell us that venting finished now. So we know we can uh, unload the sample. So now the technician will uh, open the chamber. Thank you very much. So now we put it back in the sample box and we close the chamber again before we pump it down to vacuum. Thank you very much.